What else areas has to do with slopes? Well, we know that derivatives are used to find the slope of a function. Integrals are used to calculate the area under a graph. But why is integration the inverse of differentiation and vice versa? Well, this is a very interesting question we're going to answer today. Uh, but firstly, uh, what do we mean by the integral of f of x dx? Well, this is just a, let's say, shortcut, because what we really mean is that uh, the entire derivative f of x is the integral from a to our variable x of f of t dt, where t is just a dummy variable, because we don't want the same variable uh, we are differentiating respect to appear in the integral. So we just use this so-called demi variable. Now what we have to show is that if we differentiate this function f of x, so the derivative of f of x with respect to x, this equals to the function f of x. And we're going to do it right now. But how can we do it? Well, we have to differentiate our function f of x defined as this integral. So why not using the limit definition for derivatives? So let's do it. So the derivative of f of x simply equals to the limit as the variable h, h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. This is not something scary, we are familiar with this definition, but now since f of x is defined as an integral function, we just need to substitute this integral um, in this expression. So instead of writing f of x plus h, we're going to write the following. So this is the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h is, just replace every x with x plus h, so the integral from a to x plus h of f of t dt, then we have minus the integral from a to x of f of t dt, all divided by h. Now, we know some properties of integrals. And uh, we know that the integral from a to x plus h of f of t dt equals to the integral of a to x of f of t dt plus the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. But why is this? Well, because if we simply take a graph and we have a function, we want to find the area from some point A and some point x plus h. Well, we could just find this area by adding up two areas. So the area from A to x and the area for, from x to x plus h. This is not in too difficult, this is something rather obvious. So, if we now substitute this into our limit, we get the limit as h goes to zero of the integral from a to x of f of t dt plus the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. Then we have minus the integral from a to x of f of t dt and don't forget all divided by h. Now these two terms are equal so we can just cancel them out and what we get is the limit as h goes to zero of 1 over h times the integral of sorry of f of t dt going from x to x plus h. Okay, so this is what we found, and now we have to solve this integral. And, uh, well, how okay, could we do it? Uh, if we plug h equals zero, we get the integral from x to x of f of t 
dt that is 0 over 0, so it is a 0 over 0 h. Uh, we could apply L'Hopital's rule, yes, but it is the same as doing what we're going to do now. So you can do, in, do it in two steps, uh, but uh, it's always the same thing, even though it is not what you might think. Uh, so the first thing we really have to do is to rewrite this integral as a Riemann sum. We know that if we have a graph of our function, then the integral from going from x to x plus h, so the area under this graph, is just the sum of all the areas of these rectangles. And uh, so what we do is that we, we say that this area, so the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt equals to the limit as n goes to infinity, where n is the number of rectangles, this is not h, it's n, of the sum going from i equals 0 to n of f of t i times the width of each rectangle. This is the height of each rectangle, so times the width of each rectangle we get the area. So the width is just x plus h minus x, that is this length here, all divided by the number of rectangles. So this equals to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum going from i equals 0 to infinity of the height of each rectangle times x minus x, we can cancel them out, and we get h divided by n. Well, to solve our problem, we now need to understand what f of ti means. You know what a function at a point is. For example, if this is a, then this is f of a. But what is now f of ti? We defined t equals 0 as being x that is smaller than t1, that is smaller than t2, and so on. And finally, t of n simply equals to x plus h. So we can now substitute this into our previous formula. So we have that f prime of x equals to the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over h times the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum going from i equals 0 to n of f of ti times h divided by n. Now, h is just a constant, so we can plug it into the sum and nothing happens. So we could do it and just simplify h in h. But now to really solve our limit, we first need to find what the limit as h goes to zero of this thing is. And then, uh, applying the limit as n goes to infinity, we'll get our answer. So, what is the limit as h goes to zero of the sum? Well, let's try to write down the sum explicitly. So, this is the limit as n goes to infinity of the limit as h goes to zero of, we said, the sum from i equals zero to n of f of ti, and f of t0 is f of x, so we have f of x divided by n plus f of t1 divided by n plus f of t2 divided by n and finally f of x plus h divided by n. Firstly, we could simply factor out 1 over n, so this is simply equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n times the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus dot 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 plus f of x plus h. But now, what if we take the limit as h goes to 0 of all of this stuff? Well, f x plus h goes to, sorry, not 0, it goes to x, 
and x is x. So if all these numbers has to be between x and x, they has to be equal to x. So all these number here has to be equal to f of x. In other words, this equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n times the sum of all these f of x. So f of x plus f of x plus dot dot dot. And we have this sum n times because we divided our integral into n segments. And this sum is simply n times f of x. So this equals to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n times n times f of x. And now we can simply simplify n and n. And guess what? Our answer is f of x. So the derivative of that integral function is f of x. And this is why we use the notation that the antiderivative of f of x dx equals, well, if we differentiate it, we get f of x. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And as always, until next time, bye.